Hello, world, and welcome to Dan's Explanation of Quaternions. Now, you might say, hey, Dan, who are you, and what are quaternions? I would say to you, I am no math genius, but I have learned the quaternions, and I care much to share them with you. I spent much grief learning them. Over the last three days, I thought of almost nothing else, which is nothing compared to the man who invented quaternions, who spent over 10 years of his life simply conceiving the notion, and then the rest of his life uh, proselytizing for uh, the convenience and power of his newfound invention. All right, so three days is nothing to give, but it's still more than you should have to give in today's internet-connected world. So what I want to do today is I want to tell you a little bit about quaternions. I want to tell you what they're used for, what, why you might care, and then uh, how to use them, and then how to use them even easier. And I'll, I'll cover all sorts of things that you might care about. Okay, so first of all, quaternions, basically just the field of math that involves rotating things in 3D space, okay? It's as simple as that. The core quaternion uh, function that I understand, I, there's probably multiple maths you could do with them, but the core... Uh, thing that I was interested in doing and the thing that I've, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say mastered, but I've uh, wrapped my head around for the moment, is the method by which one can rotate a point in 3D space around a given pole, okay? And that's how I would like you to think about a quaternion, okay? A quaternion math. It's, uh, it's a little confusing to learn because people keep changing what they mean when they say quaternion. Quaternion really should be used to refer to the whole type of math that you're doing. Um, but it's also used to describe a type of number that is used in that math. And that's maybe the better definition. So to uh, rotate a point in 3D space around an axis, um, you, you have to convert both that point and that axis into quaternion representations. And from there, you're able to do a couple of very simple operations uh, that then spits out the ending coordinates uh, for that uh, for that in initial point. It's it's pretty simple uh, in concept. Uh, a lot of people get held up on it because they they say, "Oh, it's a four dimensional algebra," or they say, uh, "One guy on YouTube kept saying many math post doctorates have never heard of a quaternion," and to that I say. Well, a lot of carpenters have never used an acetylene torch, but that doesn't mean that they're a bad carpenter. It means that it's a specific tool with a specific use, okay? If you've never needed to rotate something in 3D space, you probably didn't need them. Quaternions are popularly used in robotics, moving joints, angling arms uh, to reach unusual angles, uh, pointing satellites, uh, simulating the direction of uh, body parts and other objects in 3D simulations like video games or CAD programs. Um, whenever you're in a computer and you rotate anything in 3D space and it seems easy, you're using quaternions. Okay, it's, there's just no way around it. There's no way to, to basically do the math of how one point rotates around another point in 3D without quaternions. And it's really amazing that it, it uh, well, first of all, that it took so long. Uh, it took this guy 10 years. He, he, you see, he'd been uh, thinking about Euler's formula, which is a way of forming a circle, or I'm sorry, it's Euler's. It's spelled Euler, E-U-L-E-R, but it's pronounced Euler. His formula is uh, used for deriving a circle in a 2D plane. But the, the cool little secret of it is that the reason it works to make a circle in 2D is because it's really making a spiral in 3D. And if, if you realize that, then suddenly it makes a little more sense why you're able to make a, a spherical uh, rotation um, using quaternions. The reason you need a fourth dimension uh, and everybody gets held up on that is because it's not so much about making a circle in 3D as much as making a spiral in 4D. And the truth is you never have to touch that level of abstraction. Although I will um, at one point talk a little bit about why these two additional imaginary numbers had to be invented to do quaternion math. And uh, once you understand it, uh, you, you can, you can kind of kick back and just do the computations, but it is really, really cool why we need these numbers, so I, I will talk about it, okay? So, um, first, let's talk about making a quaternion out of a point and making a quaternion out of an angle, and so we know what a quaternion looks like. A quaternion is just a series, or you could call it an array, or a one by four matrix. It's, it's of four numbers. It's just four numbers. That's all it is. Um, often referred to as X, Y, Z, and W. 
Um, if you want to convert a point into a quaternion, you simply take the x, y, z coordinates of that point, you plug them into the x, y, z locations on the, uh, on the quaternion, and then you leave the w at zero. The zero actually represents the real number in a quaternion, um, but uh, you, you don't have to, uh, I, to be honest, I, I don't understand exactly what its role is. What's more interesting to me are the three imaginary numbers. Now we've got three, we've got four locations there, right? Now we plugged in X, Y, and Z. Now that's not actually just a matrix of four. That's actually a representation of a polynomial, okay? In it, the X is getting multiplied by the imaginary number I, which you should be familiar with, and then the Y and Z are, just get, are each getting multiplied by new imaginary numbers, J and K respectively, okay? Now J and K are these uh, imaginary numbers that got invented by the, the inventor of quaternions whose name is slipping by me at the moment. And uh, his, it, he was famous because at the, at the moment of him conceiving quaternions, he carved on a stone bridge this equation. He said, I equals J I'm sorry, I squared equals J squared equals K squared equals I J K equals negative one. Now, if you're familiar with the imaginary number I, then you know that it squared is negative one. What might surprise you is not that J and K squared are negative one, which would seem to imply they're equal to I, but that I J K also equals negative one. That means that when working with uh, quaternions, you're using what's called a, uh, it's a non, uh, what was it? It's, it's the, the multiplication done in one order is, uh, is not undone by, with division in the other order, basically. Um, it's, it's a non-commutative. It's a non-commutative mathematic. Uh, so it's a new kind of multiplication, uh, but all you have to know is... And then if I want to multiply any two of i, j, or k, I'm going to load them into the diagram clockwise, then if I multiply any two going clockwise, we get the third element. If we go counterclockwise, we get the third element but with a minus sign. So I times J is K, but J times I is minus K. Okay, that's all you have to know. Now, uh, basically you're gonna just end up doing some really complex foil uh, multiplication on these quaternions. Uh, I mean, it's complex because it's like, you know, four point, four, four part polynomials. Um, with imaginary numbers that don't uh, total the same things when multiplied against each other, which is a really great uh, argument for using lattice multiplication on quaternions. Um, there's a really great YouTube video uh, by a guy who's clearly a lattice multiplication evangelist, and he teaches quaternions just to demonstrate how much easier they're made uh, by using the lattice multiplication. So I encourage you to check out khanacademy.org and look up lattice multiplication and learn that if you don't already. It makes doing quaternion math uh, by hand a lot easier, although it's not remotely necessary if you're doing it by computer, which I'll touch on as well. Now, uh, to get a quaternion from a point, you, we already covered. Now, a quaternion for rotation is a little bit uh, trickier, is that basically you have to take a vector, okay, a vector is a line, it's an angle, you're going to be treating this vector as your axis of rotation. So uh, this, this vector can point in any direction, okay, um, but before you can turn it into a quaternion, you need to what's called normalize it, which means basically you're going to reduce all of it, you're going to reduce its angle, it's, uh, you know, every vector has a, has a uh, magnitude, it's how long the line is, okay, you're going to basically chop the line down to one unit, so that um, a, it, turning it into a unit vector, which just means that it's a vector whose length is one, okay? Um, people say it all sorts of fancy ways. It's like, it's like a point on the surface of a one unit diameter circle or whatever, but it, okay, look, it's a one unit vector. It's a unit vector, there you go. All right, so you take your unit vector, and uh, what you're gonna do is you're just going to turn it into a quaternion. Pretty simply, you take the Co oh, first of all, you need to know not just the angle, but you also know, need to know the degree by which you're going to rotate it um, uh, in, in radians, I believe is, is typical. So you take the cosine, blah, 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 uh, and you multiply it. Uh, basically, you're still plugging in your x, y, and z of the, of the location, but then you're just also multiplying in the sine and cosine of the rotation angle um, into it accordingly. And this gives you what's called the... Uh, the rotation quadrarian, wait, the rotation quad, 
oh wow, I can't even remember the word at the moment. Quadri- I, I've been saying it all the last three days, and then every once in a while it'll just lose my mind. Um, it's always easier to do if you try to do it in an Irish accent, because the guy who invented it was Irish. It's like, quadrarian, quadrarian, my quadrarians. Okay, it's probably quadrarians. Uh, so anyways, um, so you get the rotation one. Now the thing is, you don't. it would be really easy to just multiply uh, this by the other, and there's just one step on top of that, okay? So let's say you've got, uh, um, you've got x, y, z, w for your rotation uh, quadrarian. Quad, that just doesn't sound right. Um, once you multiply that by the point, you then multiply the result of that by the conjugate of the rotation quadrarian. Um, and, and that is just how you wrap it all up, okay? Since, since this isn't a uh, normal algebra, since it's non-commutative, you don't end up with your original result. Instead, you end up with uh, basically your correct vector, only you're just going to cut off the i, j, and k, and you're going to use those coordinates just like it was uh, a vector. You're just going to reverse how you originally made your vector quad- quadrarian. Quadrarian? Quadrarian. Jesus. Well, anyways, that basically gives you a result. It, you get a point, rotate in 3D space. Um, once you know how to do that, usually you can find, if in your programming language of choice, a way of basically inputting a, a vector, or sometimes it requires a unit vector, which is it's not that hard to derive a unit vector from any given vector. You basically just uh, divide... Uh, the coordinates each by that vector's magnitude, and you just get the vector's magnitude by, uh, oh, what is it? You, I mean, you just have to get the length of the whole thing. I, I forget offhand how to get the length of a three-dimensional line. Um, anyways, uh, it's very easy to Google that. Um, so yeah, you, you get your unit vector, and you just rotate around it. And it's it's important to remember that you're, you're just making up the line around which things will rotate and that that took me a while to get because I kept on coming from like Euler rotations and the the point of this one of the great things about it is you don't need Euler rotations once you have this because well you can basically uh derive Euler rotations directly from it you can uh you can convert it to Euler rotations or whatever um Actually, you know what? I, I don't know how to do that part, okay? So so what I did is I learned all that stuff. I learned how to ro- you do the math to rotate a point. And then I found that my JavaScript library of choice, 3JS, actually had a, a rotate around vector method. And once I found that out, I was like, oh, so I just, I just, derive, I just come up with my own um, angle vector or unit vector around which needs to be rotated. And then I say how many degrees and boom. Uh, it does the rest, okay? So you don't have to worry about gimbal lock or whatever other complications arise from having a three-dimensional rotation uh, interface. Instead, you just you just plug in what you want and the, the direction you want something to angle, and, and it, it does the rest. It's really pretty... It's a pretty amazing thing. Okay, uh, anyways, that's, that's all I'm going to rant for right now. I'm probably not going to post this. I'll probably make a video or something later, but... In case this is what I end up posting, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was as informative for you as um, <laughs> as all of my research was for me, which it would be a long shot, but I hope you enjoyed it, if nothing else. All right, well, have a good one.